What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another reaction. This is going to be a very very short reaction because we are reacting to a YouTube short which sounds like it wouldn't work at first but I have a feeling we're going to be able to talk uh, for quite a few minutes about this. So I haven't seen this, this is uh, the FNAF 4 secret that changes everything. It is a YouTube short by Matthew Patrick of The Game Theorist. And um, I don't know what he's gonna say. I don't. His timeline has been pretty good so far. I would say it's it's like very very standard. Like there's there's nothing too mind blowing about it. But all of the pieces are coming together. It, there seems to be motivation for each of the characters, and I think that the timeline really is coming together. And I, I think he's onto something. Um, so if you want to see my reaction to those two videos, uh, then you can go and watch them on my channel right now. Uh, and I, I think the third part might be coming out either this week or next week, maybe the week after. Uh, it'll, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, I will have a reaction as soon as that is released. Uh, I will be prepared every Saturday, I am prepared. Um, but today, the FNAF 4 secret that changes everything, I am a little bit scared. <laughs> What's this gonna be about? Let's have a look, let's just watch through it and then I'll talk about it. I just solved the biggest mystery of FNAF 4. Recently, I released part two of our complete FNAF timeline. Mm -hmm. In it, I mentioned how FNAF 4's final boss, Nightmare, is almost certainly a blank animatronic with a malfunctioning sound illusion disc. That is a okay. big claim to be making that I didn't have time to explain in that video, so now we're gonna do exactly that in under a minute. In the second FNAF novel, they make a big deal about these smooth-bodied animatronics that are able to turn into organic-looking monsters when sound illusion discs get activated. These yeah. are the twisted, twisted animatronics. animatronics. So not only is there a parallel with Nightmare, well, I would actually a smooth agree. blank animatronic, but now listen to Nightmare's jump scare. Unlike all the other characters with traditional roars in FNAF 4, Nightmare's jump scare is a computerized auditory sequence. And it's Nightmare almost on, like his sound illusion disc is malfunctioning, which is why we are able to see him as a blank robot. This is also why that final night starts with us fighting against Fredbear, but then ends with Nightmare. It's the same animatronic, but midway through the night, the sound disc starts turning off or outright failing. So really, Nightmare is our first okay. example of the sound illusion discs being used in the game. Do I like it? Heck no! But you have to admit, <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I, I, what do I say about this? That's interesting. Okay, so he's saying that essentially Nightmare, uh, who is the last kind of boss in FNAF 4, is just a malfunctioning Nightmare Fredbear. And I really like that, actually, like thinking about it. I'm, I'm trying to process it in my mind. Um, I like that. I, I like that a lot, actually. Uh, they have the same model, obviously, like, that's very obvious, they have the same model, uh, just, um, Nightmare has different colours and is, uh, like, translucent. So, they have the same model, which is very nice, of course, uh, for theorists. Uh, but also, like, why would there be... That's something that's always, like, struck me about FNAF 4, is, like, why would there be two final boss animatronics, you know? Like, you have Nightmare Fredbear, why would you need Nightmare? Because I feel like they both represent the same sort of thing uh, in a way like death or torment by the Fredbear animatronic, which is kind of what we see uh, with the Bite of 83. The crying child being bitten by Fredbear, um, who he is scared of as well, uh, and has these kind of nightmares about him. So I like that. I, I, I prefer that, honestly, to them being separate entities because doesn't really make sense for Nightmare to just be, you know, a, a different animatronic or just a big representation of death that has no kind of meaning behind that at all. Uh, I really like that uh, he points out that it would be like malfunctioning illusion discs or something like that. Um, but why <laughs> is my question. Why would they be malfunctioning illusion discs? Um, like, what's to signify that? Why would that be in the games? Um, sorry, I'm trying to piece my words together because I'm not very good at talking all at once. But um, yeah, I I guess my my question is like the motivation because at the moment you're kind of saying, okay, there's two animatronics, they look very similar, they're probably the same entity, completely fine. But the explanation sort of, I feel like it needs a little bit more. I do like it. I do like the explanation. It's almost like we can see, like we can see the Endo in Nightmare, 
Um, in the character encyclopedia, it specifically calls out that there is a character called the Nightmare Endo. I feel like that's kind of referencing how we can see the Endo in Son of a Nightmare. People thought it was Nightmare's brain at first, but no. We can see the Endo, and that's what is doing all of this work. It is what is creating the twisted part of these animatronics, um, kind of connecting to the twisted ones and connecting to the illusion discs that we also see in, in like, the fourth closet. So, uh, not the fourth closet, twisted ones. What am I on about? Uh, or both, technically. I think, yeah. Anyway, what am I on about? Um, I like this explanation. I have said that many times. Uh, I actually quite like that. It fits in quite nicely. Um, one thing that comes to mind is... Uh, what's the line? He says, uh, This time there is more than an illusion to fear. I think that's a nightmare line. It could be a nightmare for a bear line. In Ultimate Custom Night, they both do the exact same thing. Okay? One of them comes from the left, one of them comes from the right. Um, but they have the same mechanic overall. Uh, and either Nightmare or Nightmare Fredbear says this time there is more than an illusion to fear, which signifies that pri uh, prior to that, uh, anything that we saw of Nightmare or Nightmare Fredbear was an illusion. Right? I I think so anyway. It's it's really difficult to tell these days. I feel like there's a lot going on. There's like a there's like a lot of oversaturation with those kind of FNAF 4 theories because it's such a speculative game. Speaking of FNAF 4, if you want to see a video dissecting uh, some of the final cutscenes, then uh, go and check it out on my channel. I talk about the line, I will put you back together. One of the best lines in the series, in my opinion. Anyway, that's kind of very off topic. Uh, I feel like that's all I've really got to say. Um, I, I feel like there's probably some other Ultimate Custom li uh, Night lines that I'm missing, like I am the wickedness made of flesh or something. Like, like it, it really signifies that uh, previously they were illusions and now in Ultimate Custom Night they are real. They are in front of William Afton torturing him uh, in his purgatory or in his nightmare. So, yeah. I like that explanation, Matt Pat. You're doing a great job. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. I am sort of scared for part three because I'm sure you're going to be talking about Security Breach. Uh, but I also really like these shorts, by the way. I feel like Matt Pat should do more FNAF shorts to explain some of the timeline. I, I really like this. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, leave a like and subscribe, of course. And uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>